Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another installment of Outlands Royal Tea, a web-based interview show in which the current crown of the Outlands interviews past kings and queens of the Outlands to talk about their time upon the stag thrones. I'm Bela, uh, the current king of the Outlands, and I'll be your host today, and I'm very excited and happy to have joining me is Grace Duke Walrick de Blakeney. Your Grace, welcome to the show. Thank you, Majesty. I'm glad to be here. So why don't you start off a little bit and just tell tell the audience a little bit about yourself, where you where you come from, and and your story, as it were. Well, let me first say that uh, that graphic of, for the intro of this is amazing. That's great. That's yeah. really impressive. Our tech crew is um, amazing. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so um, Duke Walrick, and uh, I started uh, my uh, journey into the SCA when I was a kid. Uh, my parents got me involved uh, in Aitenvelt in uh, the barony of Triscuit there, Tucson, Arizona. And uh, I started when I was about seven years old. Uh, my parents took my sister and I to a demo down in Bisbee, Arizona, a real small town uh, in southern Arizona. And their SCA was uh, one of the groups that was uh, had a, an area and they were doing some fighting. And I saw uh, Viscount Sir Justin laying waste to to people and i was completely enthralled i thought it was amazing but so did my parents and so uh they uh, got involved and uh, we joined uh, rolling thunder uh there in in tucson and i played there for for a little while uh and then uh, when i was about probably about nine or ten uh probably nine uh moved to citadel and we played in citadel for for a couple of years uh, then we moved up to Ontier and then ended back uh, in in uh, Trisket there again in, in Aitenvelt. And I played in Aitenvelt uh, kind of towards the end of high school and uh, and then, you know, into adulthood. Uh, eventually I was uh, knighted in, in Aitenvelt, um, about 28 years old when I got knighted and then um, reigned once in Aitenvelt. Uh, and then had uh, an opportunity for for work to uh, move out to uh, Albuquerque to Alberon. Uh, moved out here about what 11 years ago now, yeah. And uh, been here, you know, uh, since and uh, reigned uh, as you just told me seven years ago. Uh, and that was my for my second reign uh, here in the Outlands. That's awesome. So you, how long was it after you moved from Aitenvelt? to the outlands before you won crown in the outlands because i feel like you guys were here a couple of years yeah so uh, about four four years you know, i didn't really want to what's that i didn't think it was that long really that's that's yeah so you know i didn't fight in the first crown or two even after you know i was, I was eligible i wanted to get more familiar with with the outlands and the outlands traditions uh before i got uh real serious about fighting in crown uh, and then I fought in a few few crowns and, and wasn't able to win, uh, but eventually I did, and um, uh, fought um, Duke Olaf in the in the finals of the crown that I won. Had a, some great fights with him, uh, and uh, won in Fontaine, is where they held the the crown that I won. And uh, yeah, it's a good time. Having served as crown in Aitenvelt before you came here, and and like you said, you took some time after you came to, to learn the traditions and everything, but were there any apprehensions you had after you won about, you know, maybe different cultures or doing things differently and maybe accidentally making a faux pas when you didn't mean to just because you were culturally used to doing things a certain way? Yeah, a a absolutely. I was. And, um, you know, I, and so one of the things I did is I would watch uh, crowns closely um, before uh, I, I was getting real serious about fighting in crown. Um, but then also once I did win, I uh, consulted with, with past crowns. I know you and I sat down uh, right after I won and, and you gave me some great advice. Uh, and so I, I, I really did want, seek that out because uh, one, I didn't want to kind of uh, you know, have a faux pas and, 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 and anger anybody, but I also wanted to honor the, tra the tradition. So you know, just kind of by omitting something, uh, no one might might have got mad, but you know, it's something that would make my reign better, and the, the populace would, would enjoy it more if I included. Um, one of the things that you had suggested is that I go and visit our northernmost uh, 
communities. And I was really glad that I did. Um, went to uh, Hear There Be Dragons. And that was a, a great event and really good people up there. And they were so excited to have me there and they treated me great. Um, and it was really, it was that, that event was one of the highlights of, of my reign was going up there. And I mean, it, they were a pretty big group up there and, um, and they were just completely thrilled to, to have a crown go up and visit them. Yeah. Especially someone from the South because Southern crowns don't normally go to the far Northern groups. And, and, you know, that's one of the things as a, as the Outlands is a very large kingdom, we have a lot of those smaller shires on the outskirts that don't get the crown as often as the baronies do. And so anytime a crown can get to them, it's remembered. And, and those people will love you forever just because you took the time to come there. And so Damn. I was really happy to see that you went. I was really bummed because I was planning on being there myself and then mm -hmm. life happened and I couldn't, but um, that's, you know, it's very cool that you got to go there and have that experience. So yeah. um, oh, it was great. They, you know, they picked me up at the, at the airport and uh, they were in garb. Uh, so it made it real easy to see exactly who who was uh, uh, picking me up, uh, and then uh, as we drove out to site, you know, we were chatting the whole way, and uh, once we we got onto site, uh, the person in the back seat uh, made a phone call, said, "All right, we're we're almost here, we're almost here," and I was like, "That's interesting." And so then we pull into site, and there's about 20 people lined up on the side of the road, and, and as we're driving through in the van, and they all stop and line up. And then bow as the as the van goes by, and then we go up to another group where again a bunch of people had, had accumulated, and then they did the same and did that the, the whole way in. You know, it was it was. I mean, and I'm just still in the car in my mundane. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing, you know. And then I get there, and they have a tent set up, and they've got a, a cooler there with beer already in it, and bed, and you know, it's, I just it, 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 they really treated me well. I was I was incredibly impressed. Oh, that's awesome, and that's also a great example of just. I think the Outlands culture of hospitality, whenever, really? whenever someone comes to, you know, a far away group, those people are always excited just to have new people there with them. And so that's, a, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah. yeah it was a lot of fun. And, and the whole event was, was great like that. And, and because I traveled so far, you know, a lot of the people that I normally spend my time with, you know, weren't at the event. Um, and so it kind of, pushed me to go, all right, I need to socialize. And so uh, I met lots of new people and, and uh, hung out at the fire in Bardic and, um, you know, had a lot of fun in, in court and um, yeah, made a lot, of, a lot of new friends up there that I normally wouldn't have, you know, and as you know, that's one of the great things about being crowned is that, you know, you're a lot of people that normally wouldn't approach you do. And then, and then you're kind of in a position where you want to go and, and talk to people that you normally wouldn't either. And, uh, and so it really kind of opens your eyes to, you know, how many different people we have in the kingdom and how many great people we have in, in the kingdom that we wouldn't normally uh, talk with. And certainly something, in, 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 you know, it's lasted. You know, like in my reign in Aintonveld, there was still a lot of people that talk, you know, to us when we go to events about things that we did during our reign and, and same here. And, um, you know, so it's like friendships that we've been able to, to maintain after our reign. And uh, definitely one of the things that I've really enjoyed about, about being crowned. That's, that's a great point. That's one of those things that I think is the greatest gift um, that you receive as being crowned is those opportunities and those, those friendships that you make while in that role that, that stick with you forever. And, and that's awesome. Um, so Outlands came from Aidenvelt. We were a principality of Aidenvelt. We have a very similar culture, but we also have, moments and things that we do, you know, Aidenvelt does it this way. So God damn it, we're doing it this way. Right. And like we, we have some of that for sure. The petulant right. child syndrome. Um, right. What are some of the things that you noticed having reigned in Aidenvelt and Outlands that kind of stick out to you that were maybe more similar than you would have thought or more different than you would have thought? Sure. And, you know, part of why uh, we moved here is because of the similarity uh, in, in the game. Uh, between Aidenvelt and, and the Outlands and, and the fact that we already had a lot of friends, you know, because we went to, you know, Strayas for years and years. And obviously uh, Aidenvelt has always had a pretty close relationship uh, with the Outlands. So it made coming to the Outlands uh, very attractive to me uh, in that I, you know, I knew I'd be able to integrate very quickly into the SCA here. So 
you know, there's a lot of similarities and, and I, you know, I, I, I saw those and I appreciated them. Um, but there were, like you said, subtle, subtle differences. Um, like uh, in Aitenvelt, the king really doesn't hold the, the, you know, king's blood or king's victory now, uh, but the sword of state. You know, that's always held by, by another knight, even during ceremonies. It's somebody else that's holding the blade. Um, and then, you know, I found here that, no, that's you know, the, the king is holding that. Um, and uh, I remember um, when um, uh, William Flanagan was king, uh, I was asked to, to hold the sword at, during, uh, at, at Battlemore. And then they came up to do, um, um, I think, Oaths of Fealty. And I stepped forward to put the blade out and he kind of looked at me and snatched the sword <laughs> out of my hand. I'm like, whoa, okay, all right. I'm mistake. <laughs> Old habits. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the crowning yourself in, in, in Aitenbelt, you know, was a, a big difference uh, from how we do it here. Um, the other kind of uh, surprising and startling dif difference to me was that the peer circles here, you know, the knights all here, here all get along. We get along really well and we don't really fight. And, um, you know, in, in Aidenveld, it, it's a bit more contentious at, at times. Uh, and so, you know, it was, it was nice. It was nice. And, and of course, over the years, I'm like, man, we need to, we need to get some people riled up. And <laughs> so we're, we're, we're all way too friendly with each other. Um, you know, and really, you know, as crown, all, all the circles here, you know, they, you know, they, there's, there's times, but people, people get along uh, pretty, pretty well in, in the outlands. Uh, and that's not, it's not always the case uh, in Aiden Belt. And that was a pretty stark uh, difference that, that I noted when I first came here. That's interesting. So, so his grace has his Holton came up with a question that's on this topic. So how has the relationship between Aitenveld and the Outlands changed over the years, in your opinion? That's a great question. So um, when I was uh, up and coming um, in early knighthood uh, in Aitenveld, you know, I definitely saw Estrella as our event. It was Aitenveld's event. I mean, and I know later on that was complaints from Outlands and others that that's what Aitenveld's view was. And it was Aitenveld's view. I was part of it. And I, I felt like, you know, everybody, you know, has the, you know, is kind of lucky to come here and come to our cool event and, you know, that, but, it, but it's ours. And, 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 uh, you know, even when I was, was King and I, I reigned uh, an Australia reign, uh, I felt kind of that way. And then uh, I moved here and then I kind of saw it from the other side that, you know, the, Aitenveld always wins and, you know, that they, they, they wanted us to do a lot of the work and, and, you know, without uh, our kind of equal amount of work, but even though we were not bringing nearly the numbers and, you know, the, the, the things that kind of came to a head later, uh, I, I now saw that and, and it was kind of, kind of surprising to me because I really thought that, Hey, everything's great. And, you know, everybody's just happy to be here and, you know, and Aitenveld's propping them up. Uh, and then, of course, everything did come to a head, and you know, we, we pulled out of going to being a principal, and, and other kingdoms did too. And you know, I think that was a big wake up call for, for Aitenveld. And I think since that time, uh, they've made a huge effort to try to mend fences, and they realized, as I did, that um, you know, it wasn't fair, and, and you know, the, 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 the relationship wasn't uh, equitable. And so I think that the relationship now is much better than it's ever been before. Um, and I, I think that, you know, we're, we're really close allies. I mean, lots and lots of personal friendships, much again, much more than there used to be. And, and I think that we have a much better situation uh, with Estrella and, you know, and we're getting other kings coming back too. So, you know, I think it, it has changed quite a bit in, in that, I think Aidenville had this kind of, um, you know, we're the, the the parent, and you know, Outlands came from us, and you know, we're 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 the big dog, and and um, now it's more, hey, we're we're equals, we're friends, you know, and and they we're gonna make both of us stronger going forward, and, and you know, I've been real happy to see it, and and, and I didn't even realize there was a problem uh, back when I was in in Aidenville, you know, it was only after I came here that I that I really saw it 
uh, you know, and was hearing the the perspective from people not in my own my own kingdom. So I was, uh, you know, it was a surprise to me. But I've also, even though there were some kind of rough times, I'm glad we went through them because now we're much stronger because of it. Absolutely, and I think. I actually think having the Outlands starting Battlemore and having Aidenvelt come to Battlemore yeah. and realizing, you know, it's a it's a seven, eight hour drive for them to get to Battlemore. And then a lot of Outlanders go, yeah, we drive seven hours to get to Battlemore too. So yeah. for us to get to Australia, it's 16, 18 hours. Right. And I think that really helped some a lot of the Aidenvelters kind of realize, wow, there are a lot of people that come a really long ways to come to Australia. And right. maybe we need to change our viewpoint a little. So yeah, and it's interesting too because you know when I rained in in uh, Aitenvelt, you know in Trisky or Tucson, in the southern part of Arizona, uh, I went up to um, the Kingman group uh, for one event, and I remember it was a seven hour drive, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so far! I can't believe how far <laughs> it, you know this is away, and uh, it might not even been a full seven hours, but uh, I. I remember thinking that that was so far and um, you know, and, and, you know, there's kind of a mindset, especially for like the tribaronial area in the, in the Phoenix Metro area that you can go to an event, you know, most weekends without leaving that area. And so even going to like, you know, Trisket there is a long drive. And, and then, and then for the, you know, most, most of the population there um, you know, it's a, it's in the center of the state. It's just one state. You can get to an event pretty easily. Uh, and then coming here and then especially raining here, it's, it's, it, it has a different mindset, you know, where it's okay. You know, the next closest barony is at least five hours away, you know, that, that, well, maybe three for Fontaine, but, um, but still it's, it's a, you know, the, it's a lar very large uh, kingdom and, uh, and, and, and compared to what I was used to and the kind of the, the philosophy of what a long uh, trip is, uh, was quite a bit different. So now, yeah, it's like, yeah, seven hour trip. It's not, not a big deal. That's just, that's, you know, if you're going to go to another big event, that's not in your home barony, that's, that's what it's going to take. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and honestly, it kind of made the kingdom smaller when you get used to that's how you play the SEA is that it is, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta travel and then, you know, you have fun with, with the travel, you try to make it, uh, part of the, part of the enjoyment. And, and uh, so that's, that's, that's been, uh, you know, obviously I've gotten used to it now, or, you know, I've been here long enough that that's, that's just the SCA to me now, but it, it was a little rough at, at the beginning and, and having to go, okay, I need to leave the day before to go to these events. Right. You know, I can't just try either that or it's, you know, two in the morning kind of leaving to make it and trying to do day trips was rough. Yeah. That's always one of the things when I, when I go to kingdoms like Trimaris or Aidenvale or, you know, Kaid where it's just Southern California. Right. Um, well, Hawaii as well, but for most events, you know, when I hear people go, Oh my God, it took me two and a half hours to get there. It was just such a far drive. I can't, <laughs> I just can't do this. And I'm like, man, two and a half hours, a close day trip for me. You yeah. Know? That's yeah. what I'm used to. Right. So it's, it's definitely a different culture because of that for sure. And, you know, you spend a lot of time as crown in the car on the road. Um, and what from what I found is especially if you have retinue and people like that joining you in the car, those make for some of the greatest conversations and and right. greatest teaching moments. Really, is those, yeah. those car trips. Yeah, definitely. You know, one of the other things I was just thinking about that was a lot different uh, between the two kingdoms is um, fighting style. So not so much with one on one, uh, although it is different. Um, but melee fighting, much much different. Um, you know, Edenville. I'd say is a little more serious about the war training um, and, and the structure of their, their command structure, but they're also, you know, they're, they're, you know, they got lots of shields. They're a lot, lot more static. Uh, Outlands, lots of cowboys. We love to run. We love spears, um, a lot more mobile. And so it's a, you know, a lot different philosophy. And, and I, and I definitely grew up in the, you start in the shield wall in, in your baronial unit, fight there for years you know uh and then maybe you can go to spear still in your bronial unit or you know if you become a knight and you, then you can kind of cowboy and do your own thing but otherwise you you, you fight in that bronial unit and um you know and that's that's just kind of their their style and obviously there's there's benefits to that um but it's a lot different than than what we do here and um 
you know, where, yeah, where it's, we're, we're always flank, right, flank, right. You know, so, and, uh, and, and, you know, you see the lay ons and then Aiden Bell will send four guys who love to run. And then we'll send 40 guys that love to run, you know, and, and it's just a, a lot different. And as, as I've gotten older and uh, not so much uh, with the running as I used to be, then it's like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll get there. They'll still be fighting to be done when, when I get there, but it's still fun, fun to watch our guys go. Um, cause uh, it's a much different style. Yeah. I think, uh, as I've gotten older, I've gone from uh flank, right. To saunter, right. This saunter week. right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get there when I get there. That's right. <laughs> um, so having reigned in both kingdoms, um, where did you have a moment in time in, in either reign where you, it just kind of hit you like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm the king, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I, I grew up doing lots of uh, performance, doing uh, a lot of uh, drama. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I like kind of the performance aspect of it. And so uh, when I became a king the first time, we had a lot of drama in the court and, I, I, I um, followed um, uh, His Majesty Phelan, who is now Arius, and uh, he, uh, you know, he basically what he told me is like, hey, my my coronation happened six months ago. This is yours. You know, I, once we switch to the to the afternoon court, you know, it, it's your show. So just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll I'll support it. And so uh, what I wanted to do was. Um, First off, I wanted to kill him, and uh, and and so, so and then um, I wanted uh, ghosts of past crowns to come into court, and then as he died, kind of welcome him into the the lineage of, of previous kings. And so, um, what we did is we we dismissed people. Um, uh, you know, his, his court. He basically dismissed it all the way down until he was the last person there. And then I came in and then we ended up getting into an argument and I ended up stabbing him and, and killing him. Um, but uh, uh, while we were kind of starting to talk before I killed him, the, the past crowns would come in and they would come in with their, um, you know, county or ducal coronet. And then they had a white face mask and then they would come in and they would stand behind the thrones. And so eventually there was about eight of them that were standing back behind the thrones as I then uh, killed uh, Phelan and then he, he he collapsed down and then they kind of huddled around him and then they put a mask on him and then he stood up kind of and then with it the, with them and then stepped into the background and then that's when I crowned myself um, and so that moment there was pretty powerful where I'm standing in front of all of them and I'm crowning myself and I'm looking out at the audience who just kind of witnessed this and they were kind of you know they were all enjoying it and so that was pretty neat but I think when it really came was when you start doing the oath of fealty and especially when you do the populace oath of fealty and it's just a sea of people yeah. and they're all, you know, swearing allegiance uh, to, to, to your reign and, and to you. And, um, you know, and, and just seeing all the support, you know, of people that are excited about you being crowned and, 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 you know, enough to get up and, and say an oath of fealty. And I think that's when it really hit me that, Holy cow, you know, this is happening. <laughs> You know, I mean, and it wasn't any less when I came here and I and, and did the second time. You know, I, I kind of expected that, you know, hey, I'm, it's, this is, uh, you know, kind of old, old hat for me. I, I've done this before, but it, it was not like that at all. It was just as impactful the second time. And, and, I, and I really enjoyed our, our coronation here uh, with some of the, the drama and stuff that we did. And, and uh, I think we were a lot more prepared uh, when we did it here. So there was a lot of things that were, even though it was in my second reign, uh, it was, uh, it was kind of more, uh, more impactful and more, I was more excited about it because I was more prepared, uh, having done it once before. And I was like, okay, I, the, I, the stuff I was concerned about before I've done it now. So now I can focus my energy on things that I want to do, things that I want to do different and, 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 you know, for myself and for the, for, for my, for my wife, for my queen and for, uh, the populace. And, um, that made, that made the, really our, our second brain uh, more fun for us and gave us a lot more opportunities to do, to do new things. 
Because I think the first reign, we had a lot of um, kind of learning the business of being crown. And, uh, you know, certainly it was different uh, here, the business of being crown. But we still knew a lot of what we needed to do and, and, and could spend more time and effort on being a good crown rather than just completing the job, you know. That's awesome. <clears throat> so you touched a little bit on traditions and and similarities and the right. several differences between Angel and the Outlands. Um, is there a, a tradition that you find that is uniquely Outlands that like when you think of Outlands tradition, that that's the thing that comes to your mind? Well, I'm not sure I would classify it as a tradition maybe, but uh, drumming here is amazing, you know, and uh, you know, it was something that I always loved when I was in Aiden Valley was hearing the Outlands drums and then uh, coming here, and having it at war practices and, you know, especially like the last few years, the, the drummers have been out at war practices and at Australia again. And gosh, just the, you know, how much that energizes you when you're, um, you know, like in, in a tournament and the drums are going and it's the finals. I mean, man, the adrenaline is just coursing through your veins. And then, you know, go walking out on the battlefield, um, you know, as part of the kingdom with the drums going and then being out there on the field the drums right next to you. I mean, it's really inspiring and gives you that that kind of magic uh, SCA moment where you really feel like you know you're you're in it. You know, this is this is it, and um, that's one of the things that I've 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 certainly loved, uh, and I think is a is a huge part of the culture here, is our is our is our drumming community, and and you know, as, as I'm not a drummer, but as a fighter or just a member of the populace. I'm so glad that people uh, are willing to do that and are so good at it and, 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 and also, um, you know, are so happy to teach. My daughter has gone and drummed with the drummers quite a few times, you know, even when she was like five and six you know, they welcomed her in and, and she loved it. And she, she looks forward to that opportunity every time she goes to an event. So that's, uh, that's definitely something I really enjoyed here. That's awesome. And I've, I've loved, I think it was Jax that started it, but I've loved that, they started playing the drums during crown tournament while we're fighting. Yeah. That's added yeah. such a, like you said, it's added so much emotion and so much power to yeah. those moments. And that's something mm -hmm. I would love to see continue. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's awesome. Uh, so we had a question that came in and I apologize if I butcher this name. Uh, were there any past crowns that influenced you and in how you wanted your reign to be from Lady Royce of Alvaron? Yeah. It's Rose. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Cecilia, Cecilia's a princess. Um, and uh, yes, there's been uh, past crowns that have influenced me. And I think most of my past crowns that have influenced me have been in Aitenvelt, you know, as I was younger and, and kind of learning uh, the SCA and learning uh, to be a knight. Um, and um, uh, Duke Jonathan Von Trotha was one that uh, really inspired me in that I thought he looked like a king. You know, he comported himself as a king. Um, you know, his his courts were were fun, but they were formal, you know, and he, um, you know, he, he just had a real royal air about him, he and his lady both. And um, it was something that I, that I really, I really liked, you know, that I was like, okay, you know, it's, it's okay to be, to be fun and joke, but you also need to, to play the part, not get too casual, and you need to to act uh, like like a king and be seen as as a king and her crown, and um, and so he he inspired me in that way that I was like okay, I, he personifies to me what a crown should be, what a king should be, and it was so and, and so I definitely tried to to emulate him. Uh, one of the other ones that influenced me a lot was uh, Duke Craven, and that. The, there was an incident at Penzik War where uh, Aiden Velt's up in the Serengeti and their camp used to be at the very lowest point in the, the Serengeti. And it was a heavy rain and our camp flooded bad. You know, we had a foot and a half through the, through the whole camp. I mean, nobody's tent was dry. And uh, I was there with, with my best friend. You know, neither of us were, were knights and uh, our tent was destroyed. And, you know, my, my, a lot of my armor and stuff was all wrecked and um, they set up the barn there to kind of house people that were, were displaced. And so um, 
you know, my, myself and my friend and, and several other people in, in the camp, we all kind of got together and we, we went to the barn and, and you know, gathered up what dry clothes and bedding and stuff that we had. And we went there. And then, um, you know, his majesty Craven was around, was going around and had a kind of a team there where he was helping you know, our camp, but also other camps as well. And, and I thought that was really inspiring. And, and eventually he ends up kind of, once we were settled in the, in the barn, uh, we went and, and helped him too, to go around to other camps and, and help them. Um, but uh, Drakenwald had set up uh, a really nice uh, tent uh, for uh, Craven and I think it was this mania uh, 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 for them to stay in that was dry and, and comfortable. And uh, he, he took his mania there and, and made sure she was taken care of, but he elected to come and sleep in the barn with the rest of us. And I thought that was just the coolest thing, you know, that here he is, he's got this opulent, you know, a tent set up in, in the Drakenwald camp and he would rather stay with his people and make sure they're taken care of and sleep on a park bench, you know, in a sleeping bag. Um, and I was like, okay, that's, you know, that, that's, it's not just, um, you know, he's, he's playing the role of the, the king. He's, he's actually does care. He wants to make sure that, it, that the people that he's there representing are being taken care of. And um, that meant a lot to me. And I was like, wow, you know, I didn't know the Kings did this. And that's, that's so cool that he sacrificed his comfort to make sure that we were all taken care of. So again, something that I, you know, try to try to emulate and when I, when I'm in that role or, or, or really, I think it inspired me just as a, as a knight too. Um, you know, cause at that point I was a squire and um, seeing him do that. It's like, that's, that's what we, that's what we're trying. That's what we want to portray. That's who we want to be. Yeah, and that's the, those are great stories, and and both Jonathan and Craven are great examples of, as you said, not not just royal peers, but of peers and and you know who you want to be when you grow up for sure. Those they're great men. Um, what would what would you say it means to you to have been crown of the Outlands? I think what it means to me is that I'm an Outlander. You know, that especially since, you know, I grew up in, in Aitenveld, I learned uh, a lot there. Uh, you know, a lot of my fighting style is, is, it was, is kind of from Aitenveld. But when I came here and participated at a, you know, very active and, and high level and, and then had the opportunity uh, to, uh, to reign, I think that really kind of solidified that, you know, this is my home. This is, this is who I am now and this is who I want to be. And um, I think that's what it meant to me the most is that, 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 you know, I'm, I'm part of the outlands, you know, this is, this is now, um, you know, who, who Walrick is. That's awesome. And that's a great answer. The perfect answer, by the way, because <laughs> I'm going to ask you later um, if you considered yourself from Aitenveld or an outlander. So good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as as crown of the Allens, or even as crown of um, Aiden Velt, was there an award that you always looked forward to giving out? Uh, I think the the two that I enjoy the most are kind of the the two extremes of awards, uh, and one is the the AOA, and the other is peerages. Um, both of those are really kind of fun and, and powerful in different ways. Um, you know, giving out uh, AOAs, uh, you know, it's the first uh, award that this person has likely ever received. Uh, maybe the first time they've ever come into court, maybe the first time they've ever talked to a crown. Um, and they're, you know, inevitably nervous and excited and, um, you know, not really sure what to expect. And, you know, and so as this crown, I always tried to, you know, put them at ease, um, you know, don't. I, I never really bought into the, you know, when someone calls their name and everybody goes, ooh, you know, and pretending that I'm mad at them, especially not with newer people. It's like, no, this is a good thing. You know, I want you to know right away, this is a good thing. And, you know, it's, it's because, you know, we appreciate you and, and, and everything you're doing. And, and of course, you know, I tried to make an effort to know who the individual is because a lot of times, you know, I'm getting recommendations from the local B&B or other people in the populace where I might not know them, but I know 
you know, the, the person who's recommending them and I trust them and I say, okay, yep, if they say they deserve it, they deserve it. And I'm going to do it. Um, but, you know, I don't know them personally. So, you know, if I can, I'll seek out the, the person who recommended them and say, hey, can you tell me a little bit more about this person? Or certainly I'll, you know, look at the, the recommendation itself and try to, you know, personalize that for the, the person who's receiving it. So they know why we like them, why we appreciate them, why we're glad they're here and why they're deserving of that award. And I think that that makes, you know, makes it a lot more impactful to them that it's not just like, okay, yeah, I've played for six months, so I get my chuki. It's like, no, no, no. It's not that you played for six months. It's that you have contributed. You've done great things. And that's why we, we want to recognize you. We want to, we want to tell you, you're doing great things. And, um, and so that, that was always a, a, a great award uh, to give because I felt like, I mean, it was, it was entertaining for me because, you know, I get to see that excitement and, you know, oftentimes they'll cry or, 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 you know, be nervous or whatever. And so it was, it's kind of entertaining for me, but I also knew that it was impactful to them, you know, that, that, you know, they're, they've just kind of joined this club and they've only been playing for a little while, but heck, these people like me, these people want me to be here. Look at this. They, they're, they're pulling me up in court and they're telling me, we like you, we want you to be here. And so, you know, it, it felt like, you know, I was, I was really doing something to make the SCA better and their experience better by you know making a big deal out of it and 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 supporting them, so I really enjoyed I really enjoyed that. Um, and then uh, you know doing for for peerages, you know this is where you know it's it's uh, people that have been playing for obviously a long time and have put a lot of time and effort into into the SEA, and you know it, it, almost in all cases it's something that they really want. You know they want to be a peer, and um, they're they're working hard to do that. And, you know, I, you know, when I'm able to do that, I, I you know, I have the, the opportunity and, 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 you know, for me, I, I pretty much never go against the, the will of the circle. So this is, you know, this is somebody who the, the circle supports and, and wants to see uh, elevated and, 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 you know, it is deserving. And so to be able to recognize somebody who has put all that time and effort into this and has wanted it, you know, for, for, a, a long time and is, is, is deserving of the accolade. And, and of course, you know, becoming a peer is, is a, a big deal. You know, it, it's, it changes the way uh, you, you, the, you play the game. And, and so to get somebody a, and have the opportunity to, to elevate them, uh, I always thought was, was one of the best things and, and the kind of the most, uh, impactful and, and long lasting experiences that I, that I had as crown. That's awesome. And yeah, like, like I said, the, the excitement that people get when you give in any way, especially if it's someone that for whatever reason has kind of fallen through the cracks and should have gotten their AOA a really, really long time ago, right. or, you know, people just assume they had it and then you get to recognize them with that, the, the joy and the excitement that they share. That's, that's one of those things that you carry with you forever. That's that's what gets you through those dark times as crown when you're having yeah. to do the hard stuff is thinking about all that, all those awards that you get to give out and make people smile. Yeah. So those are good answers. Um, we had a question that came in from Sir Pierre. What advice would you give someone interested in winning crown fighting wise and afterwards should they win? Well, you know, I I think that anybody who wants to fight in Crown should fight in Crown, and uh, you know, kind of first off, uh, I'm definitely of a of a mindset, and and it and it, and it, and it certainly stems from Aitenvelt, in that you know, if you want to fight in Crown, you should fight in Crown, and um, you know, it's a great thing for up and coming fighters, for for squires uh, to participate in, to showcase your skills. You're going to fight against the the best fighters in in the kingdom. And, 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 you know, and who are fighting at their best too. And so, for, you know, I, just, I think anybody who wants to do it should. Now, if you're real serious about it and you really want to not just fight in it, but you want to win it, um, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> you know, uh, I've had a lot of success in fighting and I fought in 40 crowns and won two. You know, it, it's, it's not easy to win crown. And so if you want to win crown, you know, you have to be, you have to be serious about it. You have to train seriously for it. You know, when I go to practice, especially nowadays, you know, I go, I, well, not nowadays, but when we were fighting, 
um, I, I would go and, um, you know, I'm, I'm having a good time. You know, I, I might try a new thing or two. Uh, you know, when I was a, when I was a squire and I was really trying to become a better fighter, I came to practice with the intent of, um, you know, honing certain skills. But when I came to practice, when I wanted to win crown, you know, that was a, a different philosophy. You know, one, I would fight the best fighters at, at practice I'd seek them out. And I would tell them, Hey, I'm fighting to train to win crown. Fight me like you would fight me in crown. You know, dial it up, get focused, because you know the level of focus that you have in in crown, uh, especially for the people who are successful in crowns, is a lot different than the the level of focus in in at practice, but also in other tournaments. You know that you have to be in the moment. Uh, in order to to win those those fights, because you are fighting against the best people who are fighting at their best. So I think that you you know you have to you have to train for it, you know, in, in such a way as to win it. And you have to be honest with yourself too if you're going to come into this uh, into a crown with the intent to to win, where you're where you're really training and you're doing everything you can to win that. And you got you got to be honest with yourself and say, okay, you know, do I have the time and money and, and energy? to be a good crown, you know, no, nobody, you know, we, we don't want to see somebody come in and kind of, you know, just go through the motions, you know, we want, we want, we want there to be good crowns and you'll want to be a good crown. You'll want, you'll want to be remembered as, as a good crown. So I think you have to be honest with yourself uh, as to whether or not you're, you're ready, you know, you're, you're emotionally ready, you're financially ready. You, like I said, you have the time, um, uh, you know, you have the, the, the time off, you know, available from work to, to be able to do it. Uh, and then uh, afterwards, uh, you know, should you win, you know, as I mentioned earlier, seek the advice of people who have done it before. You know, be your own crown by all means. You know, come up with what you want your your reign to be, what are going to be the main themes of your reign, what you want to, to emphasize. Um, you know, one of the things that we really wanted to do was try to be as welcoming to newcomers as possible. So we would always invite anybody who was their first event to come up and, you know, give them uh, a, a token. And so that was kind of one of the, the themes of our, of our reign was to try to be as uh, welcoming as we, we possibly could to, to new people. Um, and, you know, and, and, and I've seen lots of other crowns do their own uh, uh, themes. And, and, and so I think that that's really important, but at the same time, I think it is uh, to your advantage to seek out the advice of, of past crowns because they've made mistakes for sure. And they'll be more than happy to tell you, hey, this is what I did and it didn't work. You know, don't, you know, be or watch out for this. Um, and, and or, or, you know, as, as you told me, you know, hey, visit the North. You know, they're underappreciated and 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 they'll they'll appreciate it. And and, you know, that was really good. And it was because I got advice from someone else. So um, I would say do that. And the other thing is be careful about who you pick for your for your court. Because those people are going to make or break your reign. You know, the people that you have to, um, you know, take care of the kind of behind the scenes business to help with, you know, setting up everything at events to, to uh, doing uh, your, your uh, running courts and, and your heralds. Um, because it's a, there's a lot of things that have to happen. It's crown. And, you know, to pull it off, you can't do it by yourself. You need to have a good team of people around you. Who are going to support you? Who have who have um, experience or can get experience uh, to 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 make you uh, a success? So picking the right people uh, for for your your key officers, your your key court members, um, is is absolutely uh, important, and it's kind of something that's underappreciated because a lot of times it is behind the scenes. I mean, certainly the crowns appreciate it, and they'll they'll tell the individuals all the time, it's like, "Oh my gosh, you're you're making this this so easy for me, and I love you for it." But you know the the general populace oftentimes doesn't doesn't see that, um, but it is critical that you have that that good team of people there to support you. Absolutely, and I think you touched on some really good things in there. I mean, obviously, if winning crown was easy, there'd be a lot more dukes in the world, um, and especially once you get to the higher levels of excellence as a fighter, really, there's not a big difference in skill. Really, it's it. What I found is it comes down to who has the better focus in that moment. Yep. And that's usually who wins. And, yep. you know, I mean, 
I've been blessed to have win have won crown as many times as I have, but I have more losses in the finals than I have wins in the finals. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Same here. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, and a lot of times in those, those situations, yeah, it's, you know, when you're playing kind of at the, at the highest level, you know, the, the top tier fighters, the guys that are in the final four um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a chess match, you know, and, and you and, and the, and more important than, throwing a, the, the, the right shot is not getting killed by doing something dumb. You know, it's not, don't make a mistake. And you know, what happens a lot is, you, you know, the, the other fighter is, is really good. They're being cautious. Yeah. You, you know, you're really good. You're being cautious and um, you, you're neither pe- person is really gaining any ground. And so if you get frustrated, you start to try to kind of try to force something to happen. And occasionally it'll pay off, but most of the time it'll get you killed. And it's that, you know, whoever made the first mistake is, is going to be the one who lost and whoever was able to maintain that focus the longest and, and is the one who, who ultimately wins that fight. Very well said. Um, so you mentioned several times in there uh, about seeking advice and seeking advice, not only from those close to you, but also from people outside of, your normal circle. Um, was there a specific piece of advice um, after either one of your reigns that kind of sticks with you as, wow, man, I'm really, really glad I got that piece of advice or um, just seemed very helpful? I think probably some of the best advice is to, you know, listen to you know, your, your court, you know, you, you pick them for a reason to, to advise, um, you know, to, to listen to them, to um, give the opportunity to the populace to talk to you. Um, you know, that, so what we would often do is after courts, we'd hang around just to give people the opportunity to come over and talk to us. And uh, I think that was really good, you know, not to just kind of, okay, court's done. I'm going back to my camp or I'm going over to my group and hanging out with them. It's like, no, but go out and talk. You know, and it's not even so much that you have to kind of find people and talk to them, but give them the opportunity to come and uh, talk to you. And I don't know what that noise was, but um, so uh, the, so, so that's what we would do. We would, we would go out and, and, and kind of mingle and, you know, people like what would happen a lot is that somebody who was a little bit more established in the group brought their friend for the first time and said, Hey, and said, Hey, I want to introduce you to their majesties. And so because we were there and we made ourselves available, they were able to do that. And then we were able to talk to this new person and say, Hey, so glad you're here. You know, we, you know, are you having fun and make it a, 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 a you know, a more, a, a, a memorable moment to them. So I think that, that, that the, the advice of making ourselves available, was something that I, I thought did pay dividends on, on how we were uh, effective as a crown. Absolutely. Being approachable is something that I think um, you can't overvalue really as, as crown, not, not just as crown, but as a peer, you know, peer fear and um, hat fear and those things, those are real things, especially for people that are new who are for the first time feeling like they might've found their people and they want to feel welcomed and they want to feel like they're part of us. And so you, as a new person, you're afraid of saying something wrong to offend somebody. And so being approachable and and having that attitude of, you know, that's one of the things when people introduce me, I always just tell people I'm Bela, you know, yes, I have titles, but those titles are for formal occasions. And when you're meeting a new person, to me, that's not the time. That's right. it's my job as a peer to make those new people feel welcome and feel like they're home. Right. And if I can remove those titles from it in that moment, it makes it a little easier for them to see me as a person and right. not as this thing they're afraid of. Right. So yeah, that is really great advice. Um, having been here for a while and having reigned in the islands and and fought in multiple crowns, is there is there somebody? that you look forward to having the opportunity to serve the Outlands as crown? Uh, Sir Thomas, I would love to see win crown, <laughs> uh, you know, down, down in Alberon. And um, I really respect and admire him. Uh, I think he is easily a good enough fighter to win. 
uh, and um, he's just never managed to to get there. But he is somebody who who I would I would love to to see win. I think he would do an amazing job. Um, he's he's very theatric, which I appreciate, uh, and uh, also just a, you know genuine, real, and uh, a kind person. And I would be incredibly excited if uh, uh, he were able to have the opportunity to, to reign. I think he and his lady would make an amazing crowd. Yes, I would be really excited about that. Oh, very cool, very cool. Um, so do you have any uh, – I know you've fought in crowns since you've won, and we talked a little bit about this before the show. Um, you fight in crowns, but – whether or not you're there, you know, doing, you know, hoping to win is, is necessarily different. Um, do you have any desires to, to reign again in the islands? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, I, I would like to, to do it again. Um, but again, like I said earlier, you know, you have to be honest with yourself and whether or not you have the, the, the time and, and, and money and, and energy to, to do it justice. And, um, you know, there, there's been a couple of times since I've won where those all came together and, and I felt that I could do a good job. Um, but oftentimes, you know, when I'm being honest with myself, I, I, not, I don't have all three of those things uh, available to me. Uh, and so, you know, I think anybody who fights in crown should be prepared to drain. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to see anybody throw a fight. You know, it really is, is disappointing when, uh, somebody who's a great fighter knocks out some would-be contenders and then throws a fight and 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 you know took the, that opportunity away from the people that were genuine about it. And so um, you know when I go into Crown and I'm not real serious about it, um, I'm still absolutely willing to do it if I win that day and I'm not going to throw any fights to avoid it. Um, but I also uh, have handicapped myself in the past by doing like uh, fighting with buckler and sword. But if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it the whole tournament. You know, I'm not going to come in and again, knock out would be contenders with a better weapon style and then switch to a inferior style. Um, you know, just to ensure that I don't, I don't win. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the whole way through and I'm going to fight to win every fight. And so that's, you know, and, and again, you know, I come from uh, uh, a culture where, you know, you're, you should fight in crown. And, and I, and I've always loved fighting in crown. I love tournaments. Um, you know, I love melees, but I, I, I also really love fighting in tournaments. I think it brings out the best in my game. It brings out the best in other people's game. I, I love the kind of excitement of, of the, the, the um, re reduction in number of participants as you get kind of towards the end of the tournament and you get to the final eight, final four, final two, that excitement is, is um, something that, that, uh, I really enjoy in the SCA. And so I, I just, I just love to fight in, in tournaments and, you know, I want to, to partake uh, anytime I can. And so, you know, when there's an opportunity to fight in, in crown, I, I generally do. And um, because, because I enjoy it. And I think that when I was, when I was like a squire and I would see some of the kind of top guys not fighting, I'd be disappointed. It's like, Oh man, I, I really love fighting against him. And I really love to watch him fight. And so, you know, I kind of want to be there as, hey, here's, you know, Duke Walrick, uh, you know, come fight me and, and, and give people that, that uh, you know, opportunity to, to fight me uh, in, in a crown tournament where I'm, you know, fighting with that, that level of focus. Um, and and, and I, I think it makes the tournament better as a whole when you've got uh, more people in there and, and they're all, they're, you know, they're all uh, – fighting to win. And, you know, obviously I'm fighting with an inferior weapon style, but I'm still every one of those fights fighting to win. And, um, you know, I just love, I just love fighting crown and I think everybody should fight it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I want to make a point of clarification here for the people who might be watching. Um, cause I know what you mean, but they might not. When you're saying inferior weapon style, you mean a style that you're not as good at. Not, that I'm not as, as good. That's true. That, so that's just, a good, good point that I'm not as good at. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody would get offended, but I, I want to make sure there's no chance of that. <laughs> so, um, her great, uh, Countess Monica Von Zell sent in a question. Um, that would, she would like you to tell us what you remember from your days in the Citadel. 
Okay. Well, I was, I was young. I was in third and fourth grade when I uh, lived in the Citadel. Um, and I remember some of the big feasts that, that we had down there. Uh, I also played boffers like mad when I was down there. The first tournament I ever won was in Citadel. Uh, and um, it was a boffer tournament. And, uh, you know, I, 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 had a, I had a great time, you know, um, my, my parents got a lot more active uh, when we moved to Citadel. You know, we were just kind of starting out in uh, Trisk Deer and playing in Rolling Thunder. Um, but we got, you know, kind of more established as, you know, yeah, yeah, SCA is something we want to do uh, while we were in, in Citadel. One of the things that I remember whenever I think about those days, because I was, again, I was, I was young, so I only have a few memories. But I remember my mom made me this pink uh um what's that called like kind of upholstery fabric uh jerkin and with a little tiny like skirt on it and white tights and little pink shoes and i don't know i was like a you know a nine-year-old boy running around in kind of this pink peter pan outfit and but i mean she was very proud of it and and, it, and i got lots of compliments on it but i was just like oh yeah yeah, you know, uh, and, and, and I think I've seen one picture uh, that my parents uh, still have in an old photo album where I'm I'm, I'm wearing that outfit. But um, some of a lot of my memories are, are from um, the the park down there uh, where they they hold their practices, and it's a great park. Uh, it's got a bunch of bridges and uh, kind of stonework uh, ramadas. And, uh, you know, the practice for SCA was at the same time as the uh, practice for Amp Guard. And so my, my dad would go and take me to the park. He'd go do SCA. And then I'd go over to Amp Guard and play boffers and throw daggers and fireballs. And uh, <laughs> I ended up getting and recruiting all my or a bunch of my friends from school. And so we had a whole crew of us and my, my mom made us all. Uh, matching tabards with the millrand on it. And mine had a green sword that went through the middle of the millrand to show I was the leader of our little, little crew. And uh, when, you know, they would, they would pick teams uh, in, in amp guard and uh, we, we, we counted as hobbits. So we came two for the price of one when they're picking teams. And so it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a blast. And, and I, and I love doing that. And, and the fact that the practices were, were together so I can go over and do, do that while my dad's doing SCA. And oftentimes the SEA guys would come down after uh, fighting there. They'd come down and do amp guard a little bit. And of course, you know, with the amp guard rules, the kind of more armor you, you're wearing, the more hits it takes to kill you. So the kind of heavily armored SEA guys would come down and be nigh invincible. And all of us would be running around throwing poison daggers. And yeah, it, was, yeah, it, was, a, it was a good time. And it was, a, it was a heck of a lot of fun. That's awesome. So uh, Sir Shavros had a question. I think we covered most of it by your answer, um, but there's part of it that I think I want to come back, circle back to you. Um, and that is, um, do you think there's a difference in culture from Aidenvelt to the Outlands when it comes to more people fighting in Crown? Oh, yeah, there's absolutely a huge difference, um, you know, here between Aidenvelt. Uh, and, you know, and, and it's and it's interesting. And, you know, one of the things that I love about the SEA and, and, and you know, uh, circles is that, you know, we all have different opinions. We're all we're all people. We we play the SEA. We want to we at uh, the way we want to play it. And, you know, we can provide our opinions and our uh, on our experiences to others. But, you know, it's there, there is no consensus. And, you know, I hear that a lot in, in circles to say, oh, you know, we need to tell up and coming squires what they need to do. It's like, well, you know, there's not a consensus, you know. I have my opinion of what a squire should do and what a knight should do. And, and, and all of us have different ones. And I think that fighting in crown uh, was one of the areas where there's a big difference between what Aitenvelt believes and what Outlands believes. And, you know, obviously I grew up in, in Aitenvelt and I fought in every crown I could. And my, my, my dad, uh, who was also my knight encouraged me. He's like, Hey, get your butt out there and you, you fight. And, um, and, and I did, and I, and I you know, I, I, grew up with that, that mindset. And, you know, it, it wasn't until I was really ready to win that I had the skill set to win, you know, that, you know, and that's the thing that gets me is that when, okay. And so the, 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 the big difference between Aitenvelt and Allen's is that Aitenvelt says, yeah, fighting crown, especially if you're like a non-belt and you're a squire, uh, you want to be seen, you should go fight in it. Outland's mindset is more of a, 
you only enter crown if you're ready to be crown right now and you 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 can win and you know i, I just disagree with that and that you know when you fight in crown you're gonna fight you know his majesty bailey you're gonna fight me you're gonna fight uh robert you're gonna you're gonna fight you know you know jackson these guys that are really good fighters and if you're an up-and-coming squire you're not gonna beat those guys you know I, I, I just don't think it's going to happen, right? We, especially in the format that we do with two out of three, the chances of you getting lucky and beating one of these top tier fighters is, is nil. And so I see it as a great opportunity for those guys who might not be ready to be King to go and fight and be seen and fight these guys at the, at their, their, their greatest skill. And it'll be a really good experience for them. So that way when they are ready to be crown and they have the skills, they'll have fought in, 10 crowns before and they'll get through all of the the jitters that you have in crown and kind of the mind the get into your own mind that knocks a lot of great fighters out it's like you know like i i'm real calm and comfortable when i fight in these high level tournaments and it's because i fought in a lot of them and i've fought in high profile tournaments a lot of times and so you know i, I want to see and i encourage my squires hey go fight in crown you know and if you do win i will absolutely support you i will make sure that you are successful financially, you know, I'll make, I'll, I'll drive you to the places, you know, I'll, I'll back you up, you know, and I think that's another thing that not everybody realizes is that past crowns, you know, we all, we all love the Outlands and we all want to see the Outlands and the crowns be successful. So we're not going to let somebody who's not prepared fail. You know, we're going to help to, to prop them up and make sure that they're successful. So if by chance someone who's un, ill prepared to become King wins, they'll be supported. And so I want to see, you know, everybody, especially kind of, you know, newer fighters, squires, up and coming guys, all, all, all fighting crown. Because I think it's a great experience for them. And if they've got aspirations of someday winning crown, the experience that they'll gain by doing that, uh, I think will be will be invaluable. And, you know, again, it's a much different mindset between Aitonvelt and the Outlands. And that's the kind of the Aitonvelt philosophy. And that's the philosophy that I grew up with and, and, and I still endorse. Um, where yeah, Outlands is you know, and that's why we, uh, oftentimes we have much smaller crowns. The 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 difficulty in winning here in Aitonvelt is no different. It's just as hard to win in either kingdom because the top guys are in either tournament. You know, they're in the they're in the Aitonvelt tournament, and they're in the Outlands tournament. So you're not you're not weeding out the top guys. You're you're thinning out the bottom guys, right? And so it's still just as difficult in, in either place. Um, and and I, th and I think really anywhere in the in the known world, it, it, you're gonna fight top tier guys really tough guys to beat um but you know it, it's just that you don't have all the kind of the the mid-level and lower level fighters and i think that's a shame because i think they would benefit greatly from participating in in that tournament and you know they're not going to get through, in my opinion they're not going to get through those top guys anyways but they're going to gain a lot of great experience on, on the way there awesome thank you for clarifying your viewpoints and those are those are great viewpoints um we've gone past our hour time um, before we sign off, though, I'd like to open the floor here. If there's there's anything that you'd like to bring up, or, or any anything you'd like to touch on that we didn't come up in, during the conversation, um, now uh, please feel free. So one thing I was thinking as we got into here is like, you know, what would I ask Bela if um, I had the opportunity? And one of the things that always kind of I don't know frustrates me, and I'm sure it frustrates you, and I wanted to hear your opinion on it is uh, when people start to say um, Marus aren't a medieval weapon and, you know, what, what what's, what, what's not, it's not so much what's your um, take on fighting with the Maru. Because I personally, I love a Maru. I think it makes me a better fighter to fight against it. I, I, I love the weapon style. And, um, but I know a lot of people, especially East, Eastern kingdoms really kind of dog on it. So um, yeah, I wanted to see kind of not, not so much, you know, what your opinion on whether or not it should be used is, but, you know, what's your feeling on kind of being attacked about using a modern? Um, I think it's ridiculous and disingenuous. I think a lot of the times when people attack Madu fighters, they use it's not a period weapon or it's a peasant weapon as an excuse because the reality of the situation is if you're a sword and shield guy and you're fighting predominantly sword and shield guys, you know, 90% of your fights are getting against other guys with sword and shield. You give yourself a lot of really bad habits yep. that decent sword and modu guys exploit 
and get you killed quickly. Um, that's really what it boils down to is, is yeah, if, if totally you're agree, honest man. that you don't like it because you can't figure it out and you can't beat it, fine. Ask a question. I'll, I'm happy to teach anybody how to beat me. Like I've, as King, I've held more classes than I can count of here's how you beat Bela, right? I don't care because I need, if I teach I you take how, one of those classes, if I teach you how to beat me, I have to come up with new things, right? Yeah. It makes me a better fighter. Um, and as far as the, it's not period or whatever, it, that's, that's bunk. Because if you look at history, pretty much every non-Christian um, culture has a version of a Madhu or something like that. And, and, you know, we call Christian style with a, a sword and a great right. sword. Well, where'd that come from? That came from people on crusade fighting Moors who had an Adaga. And so they were trying to counter that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think all those, all those excuses are just that they're excuses. Um, if you want to be a better fighter, then learn how to fight with everything and against everything, in my opinion. Like yeah. when I fight in the high level tournaments, and I fight yourself and I fight Rothgar and I fight, you know, Duke Mark from the West. I don't want Mark fighting sword and shield. I don't want Mark fighting sword, but I want Mark fighting this bastard sword because I know I'm going to get my best fight and it's going to be the most fun for me. So that's kind of, it's frustrating to me because I hear it all the time, you know, and it just be honest about it. If you don't like the style because you can't beat it. Okay. Ask a question, right? I don't. I cannot think of very many top level fighters out there that are not willing to teach people that want to learn. So, ask the questions and get better. No, I mean, and, and, and you know, there there's not as much in, in Ink Belt nowadays. But when I was growing up, and I, I grew up in um, my counselor Justin's uh, household, uh, my dad was squire to, to Justin, and Justin fought with the Madu yep. um, at least back then, and he was he was great with it, and. You know, I always really loved fighting against him because it, it it made me think differently, which didn't didn't just make me a better Madu, uh, fighter against Madus, but it made me a better fighter, you know, in general to 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 kind of have to go, hey, I need to really focus on a lot of different things. I got to look at where his feet are, you know, I got to see what he what he's doing with his hands and how he's setting things up, you know, and made me better against Florentine fighters. And so, you know, I I, I think that. You know, I, I guess I get frustrated with it too. Even though I don't, I don't really fight Madu. Uh, I was like, you know, I kind of, I think I have the same opinion you do. It's like you know, you're just, you're just complaining because you're not good against it. It's like somebody who only fights right-handed guys, and suddenly they fight a left-handed guy, and it's like, oh my gosh, he's blowing up my ribs. Right. Uh, fight left-handed guys more. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, change your style. Don't just say all oh, left-handers can't fight. You know, it's like no, you gotta, you gotta adapt. Yep, uh, absolutely. Um, before we go, I wanted to take a moment and. Um, Circle back on something you said, like at the very beginning. Um, one of the things that I, as as a lifelong Outlander uh, and someone who's who's reigned here and, and this kingdom means the world to me, the fact that you and your lady, when you came here, you you took the time to learn the culture, you took the time to learn what it meant to be an Outlander, and then when you won crown, you sought advice from past crowns and from longtime players. And you took all of that advice and you took those opinions. And when you went to your reign, you did things in a way that was uniquely yours, right? You made your reign your reign. And it was fabulous. And I say that with all love and respect, right? <laughs> Whenever I see or hear someone go fabulous, I think of your reign and it brings a smile on my face because you guys did things your way, but you also did it in an Outlands way. And you, you also paid um, homage to where you came from in Aidenville. And, and you showed respect to all of those cultures and all of our people, all while doing what you thought was best for the Outlands at the time. And that's what a crown should do always. And so the fact that you guys did that and you did it so well has earned my undying support and admiration for always. And I know I'm not the only one in the Outlands that feels that way. And I, for one, would very much welcome another reign of Walworth and Cecilia. Yeah. Well, thank you, Majesty. It means a lot to me that you say that. And I'm glad that that's 
how our brain came across because that was certainly uh, our, our desire. So thank you for that. So thank you again for taking the time to join me today. Uh, this will be the end of this show. Um, join us, please, in two weeks when Her Majesty will be joined by Duchess Aziza, the first um, woman to reign as four times as Queen of the Islands. Um, thanks again, everyone. And until, you know, we're getting near the end uh, and live events will be happening soon, hopefully. More and more people are getting vaccinated. I know Her Majesty and I really cannot wait till we can have an event and see everybody and see our populace in person. And until then, continue to stay safe, continue to reach out and check on each other along with the islands.